Good evening again from 538's makeshift newsroom. Galen Druk here. Our colleagues at ABC have just projected that President Trump will win the state of Ohio. And here with me to talk about that projection is my colleague, Claire Malone. Hey, Claire. Hey, Galen. How are you doing? Staying caffeinated? Staying, uh, staying awake? Yeah. I don't even know what time it is. 12 something. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. That's what I like to hear. All right. So your home state is Ohio. You've been tracking some of the political trends there over the past four years. What happened? Uh, you know, this was a it was a close race going in, um, and yes. it looks like it's been able to be called relatively early in the evening. Yeah. So what happened in Ohio tonight, I think, is is basically a continuation of a trend we've been seeing, which is that President Trump tends to win voters who are uh, white without a college education. In particular, what I thought was interesting were a couple of counties, particularly Lorraine County, which Hillary Clinton won in 2016, but with Don which Donald Trump flipped from Joe Biden. And I think in people's popular conception, you know, Biden really had much more of a fighting chance. But I think the progression of four years, um, those, those partisan instincts in those particular places have really solidified. Um, and so Ohio, in a lot of ways, uh, in 2020, simply continued the trend it started in 2016. And I think that's the overall story of that state. Yeah. And it's worth saying, of course, that non-college educated white voters make up 40 percent of the electorate. So uh, they're a pretty big chunk. And then college educated white voters are about 30 percent whites, uh, you know, of course, totaling around 70 percent of the electorate. Did we see Biden make any pickups or gain any ground in the suburban areas of Ohio where he's thought to have also overperformed? A leading question. Yes, he did. He did pretty well in suburban areas of Ohio, Columbus and Cleveland. I think what um, what Ohio kind of is telling the election prognosticators is potentially what parts of Pennsylvania could do. Obviously, we're not going to know the Pennsylvania vote for a while. Um, and, you know, Biden was always going to be making up a big uh, deficit in Ohio. I mean, Trump won it by, I believe, eight points in 2016. Um, the race was a toss up this time around. So um, it's not as if Biden didn't make gains. It was a certainly a close, close race. But I think what we're seeing now is, OK, Pennsylvania has some of these Ohio like areas and its western part. You know, you think about the coal country, the Marcellus Shale, uh, you know, fracking country. Um, and then it also has the urban areas that, that uh, maybe we can take, the urban areas and suburban areas, where maybe we can take some lessons from Ohio. It's kind of regional twin in some ways, fraternal twin, um, and see if, if we can make any extrapolations out about Pennsylvania. Obviously, we don't have any Pennsylvania results yet for you, but... Ohio says some potentially interesting things about it. For sure. Uh, as we stay up throughout the evening, uh, what else are you going to be watching uh, now that Ohio has been called? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it, we're in an interesting dynamic here where the networks are mostly being pretty conservative about their projections. Fox News has been out a bit ahead of things. They called Arizona before uh, other networks have called Arizona. Texas is sort of... For an, Biden, of course. Yes. Arizona there. Yes. Sorry, for Biden. Um, so I'm kind of, you know, like the rest of, of the political universe, just sort of interested to see these last eking margins in these states. I think because the networks are all being so conservative, and I think that's a good thing, um, we're all just a little bit in this uh, limbo stasis. So... I'm kind of looking for some of these big calls, some of these, you know, medium size uh, pits of electoral college uh, votes. And, and that's what I'm watching for in the next, I don't know, two hours or whatever, <laughs> whatever it is before we have our next big check in or something. 
Yeah, well, uh, whenever we end up podcasting tonight, I'm sure it will be pretty late. <laughs> um, I can't, I don't even want to think about what time it might be. Uh, but anyway, thank you for checking in and sharing your Ohio wisdom with us. And uh, stand by your, on Slack, your phone, etc. Let's check in soon. Sounds good. Bye, Galen. Bye, Claire. See you later.